later. I was like, holy shit, why is this, why is this, why is this hotter all of a sudden? So I definitely had some hurdles, but um, really looking forward. I think the kinks are worked out. And so really looking forward to this, this coming season. All right, sweet. Now, I mean, I know shit happens. Obviously, clutches fucking, you know, they slug out. It is what it is. But for the most part, anytime you get a clutch that slugs out, are you finding that the, the issue to it? Like, is it always because like you either moved or is it sometimes like, what the fuck was that all about? Like, how often is it kind of like where you know the the, the, the reasoning behind a slug out? Yeah. You know, for a couple of those, I absolutely do. That I thought they just never, they, they never they never packed on the weight that they probably should have. And I probably shouldn't have locked them. It's I'll, I'm, I'm honest. I, sh I probably shouldn't have. Um, it was borderline. I decided to do it. And I learned my lesson with a couple of girls. I think the other girls, like two of them were first time moms. So whether it's that, whether the dad had, you know, maybe the dad was a first time dad, like, was it, you know, weak sperm? Was he too hot in his rack? Were they too hot? You know, were they stressed? Like, some of those i think it's really hard to really pinpoint because i think there's so many different things that could lead to a girl slugging out but like i said i think a couple like two of them for sure um i had a russo clown girl that just didn't pack the weight back on the way i would have liked um she was at weight she was over 1500 grams but i think she could have packed on a few more meals and maybe would have been better off and i had a special pied girl the same way so okay yeah, that's crazy. So let me ask you this, Troy. When you, your first year of breeding, right? A, let me ask you. Okay, hold on. Let me slow this down. So ball pythons, was that the, was that the thing right off the go when it came to becoming a, a breeding business? Like, was it all about the ball pythons? Yeah, you know, we we did well with leopard geckos and things like that over these past 20 years. Um, but really, when I dove back in, <laughs> when I dove back into ball pythons, it's kind of funny. Like, it's every, every guy that's probably went through this, like, my wife was like, oh, you'll not, you won't stop at these, you know, 1.2. You're going to end up with, you're going to end up having an entire snake room again or something. And I'm like, no, no way. Um, but it, it grew quickly, right? Like, you know, it's addicting. And so um, I, I did, I kind of fell in love very quickly and dove in uh, and learned a lot of lessons. Um, I thought I had retained a lot of info from, you know, years of, Kind of hearing things and whatnot but i was never really big into breeding snakes that you know that first 10 15 years um so i i had a lot to learn and, and i found that out i think very quickly and, and luckily you know for me it's really two things one you have a good support system of friends that are in the hobby that have done it you know in the industry have done it for you know matter of years above you and that are willing to share and i think things like this mj like this wasn't around 25 years ago necessarily like you you know, back then it was Reptiles Magazine, you know, and, and uh, you learned what you could from maybe a phone call and, and stuff. And, and I remember buying snakes for our pet store off of a fax machine. So uh, it, it's been a, it's been a learning process and it's continued to be a learning process. You know, the slug out thing is is a learning process. And so um, but, yeah, I think I dove pretty, pretty quick, pretty deep right into ball pythons when after I bought the one point two, man, it was it went pretty quick. <laughs> it grew quickly. So with that being said, your first year was how many clutches? I think the very first year, um, I want to say was six or seven clutches. Damn, six or seven clutches. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's, that's right on target where I was at. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, but, yeah, and, no, I was going to say like my next, like from going from that to like, I think I hit around 32 a couple years ago and now to hit, you know, damn near 60. It, it's been a, it's been a fun journey, man. And I, I my goal, I think goals are really important. My goal is to yeah. get to 100 clutches. I want to see what 100 clutches is like. That's awesome. Uh, and, and 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 so with that being said, what what were you producing? Okay, so how long did it take you to get to this point? Because how, how how many years ago was it your first clutch? If you, I don't know. If yeah. You so that. my first, I bought in like be either nine or ten years ago that I bought okay. that first trio, and right away that year I started buying other females and stuff so that following year is when i got my first clutches um and i and again i think it was around six or seven so somewhere around eight years ago i hit that six or seven mark fast forward to now you know darn near 60. dude and i feel personally for me i want to get to 50 and see wh where that's at um just because i work with and i'm talking about ball pythons just because i work with a bunch of other stuff that i hope by that time 
because I started tech. This is my my third actual year breeding. So this is my actual third year breeding, and uh, I, I have at sixteen clutches. Like today, th- today I just figured out I'm actually gonna have sixteen for the year, right? Okay. And 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 but thing is, like, I'm not like I'm in no rush. I'm not trying to get to fifty tomorrow. You know what I mean? So like, right. like because I kind of already scared myself out of that phase because I did buy a lot at first, right? And you know, I had friends like Miguel and other homies that were like just on that level, and I was just you know, scratching my head and it became more of just me trying to keep up. And I was like, fuck this. I'm good. Like, you know, like I'm going to get what I feel like I want selectively. And then obviously I'm going to go feed my other addiction with chondros and emeralds and shit like that, which I feel like me, I I just, I, not that I would get fully bored off just ball pythons, but I would fully get bored off just ball pythons. So, you know, just because I just need the interaction. Like I need to almost get bit. Like I need to be kept on my toes. Like, I don't know what it is. And, you know, I, I mean, as much as I used to bitch and complain about doing all the retic work, which that does make sense, you know, that that actually got my mornings going, like knowing that I had to do that. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, you know, it is what it is. But and I mean, and I like that you brought up the point, like you said, um, you know, you, you bought a, you buy a lot and then you kind of buy what fits you. Right. And, and that yeah. was a lesson I think we went through. I was, you know, quote unquote, chasing, um, thought that I needed the next best thing, this and that. And, that, and that's somewhat true now. But. It's, it's more dialed in, I think, or more calculated. Um, I remember that peak where I was like, bye, bye, bye. And now and now it's like, well, I don't really need that. I don't really want that. It doesn't fit my room. It doesn't fit my project. It doesn't fit my goal. Or, you know, so it's, you, you kind of roller coaster, I think. And, and we're finally at a point where, you know, you kind of plateau on, on how to do this correctly. Again, I think it's always a learning experience, but I feel like I'm at a good point where um, I don't get lost in that bye, bye, bye. Well, I mean, I think what it was for me is like I was so just like, like not sure I was buying this snakes for the money. It was more of because of the rarity, right? And then once I found that like there's not much rarity in ball pythons, there is with the morphs and quality, right? Like in certain things, but you can only go so far before you hit something where it's like everyone everyone already has it, right? Once you you know to a certain point, right? And I don't I don't mean everything. I'm just saying like everyone's dipped into something that's all is. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have my new toad enclosure. But anyways, what what was I going to fucking say after that? Hold on. Shit, what were we just talking about, Troy? Help me. I do this like once a time. Uh, like, doing the roller coaster of buying stuff. Oh, yes. It's, okay, there you go. Thank you so much. You're my man. I got so you. the whole Okay, so like I said, I, I was in the beginning when I was getting all these ball pythons. It was more like, you know, I didn't know what a killer bee was. I didn't even know what albino recessive was i had no i was i was seeing it and i was buying it because i was like that's the kind of buyer i was like mm-hmm. i just i just want it right and then as i got more serious into the whole ball python breeding thing that's when i was like kind of like all right so what makes sense what, what what is it that i have that that could actually make what i actually want you know and that's mm-hmm. when i realized a lot of shit just you know i no so i had to cut that down a lot and when i realized that everything that i really really wanted was like fucking five grand <laughs> you know like really really expensive but i had some heavy stuff already but long story short when i upped my ball python game it was selective powerhouse males it was really nice females not a lot but i got my game up to like back to like 50 ish ball pythons um back in like 2018 or so um now i'm now i'm pushing over a couple hundred i'm like you know so but anyways i'm just saying like it just wasn't about the money you know what i mean Obviously, as I learned more, I saw what Miguel was doing. I saw what other people were doing. I knew that there's a lot of money involved in this. It could come, you know, it really yeah. can. I, I will openly say that, right? But I, I at that time, I was fucking I had a part owner of a gym. I was making good money. I was it, that wasn't important to me. Like I wasn't like trying. You know, I had mentors who were doing this 100 percent for the living, and I would look at them like, man, maybe someday. But right now, I don't want nothing to do with that. It just happened like that three years ago. That was my mentality. And then now literally I do this shit full time, you know, because you gotta understand a lot of things came into play, podcasts, a bunch of shit. But anyways, yeah. but my, what I did was I kept my, I kept my interest relevant, meaning everything I have is actually what I want. Mm -hmm. And you know, it will it make money someday. If I, if, if it pans out, you goddamn right. It will, because everything I like is expensive. Like I do like the selective stuff, but I don't have, hundreds of it you know like and what i say is like i don't have hundreds of ball pythons i don't even know where i'm at with my ball actually yeah i do i'm like 150 ish <laughs> and then right. yeah yeah so but anyways that, that it's like you said that shit just catches up i'm like 
I don't even, I sometimes don't even keep track on how many ball pythons I have. Um, but like I'm saying is I, I just kept my interest relevant by having chondros, having emeralds. I, you know, I have two separate rooms because that's why I'm into keeping. I'm not, you know, if the money, the money part is the fucking bonus on top of everything that I enjoy that these animals bring, you know, like the fact that I can make money off enjoying this. And if you're good at being a people person and making, making relationships and going to shows and putting yourself out there, like Miguel and Justin and these other big breeder, like you do, like how these other breeders do, I'm telling you, you can make a living out of this. It's super possible. Absolutely. Thank you for watching this week's Trap Talk with MJ podcast clip. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. That way you're on top of every single Trap Talk clip that's released here every week. And that way you're on top of every single podcast that comes out every Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday here on the Trap Talk with MJ YouTube channel where we bring all the hottest up-and-coming reptile keepers and all the most experienced, hottest reptile keepers in the reptile game. We will see you here next week with another Trap Talk clip, and we're out.